Well, News Nation brought you these powerful images of the intentional controlled burn of the toxic chemicals following the East Palestine train derailment. Uh, this was last February. The chair of the NTSB now saying all of this could have been avoided. NTSB chair Jennifer Hamendi telling Congress there was another option to safely get rid of those chemicals. Ohio senators pointing the finger at Norfolk Southern saying the company was more concerned with getting trains back on that rail than the safety of those residents. This town very, very well may have been poisoned to facilitate the rapid movement of freight, or at the very least, it was poisoned for reasons that we can't identify. That should really concern every single person on this committee. And as you know, Rich McHugh has been in East Palestine from the very beginning, from day one. And Rich, this is a major development for the folks who live there. A absolutely, Marky. This is, I I've been, I've been watching these, all these, these hearings and everything. This is a, this is massive because the narrative all along has been from Norfolk Southern and others that the temperature in those train cars, those five cars, was rising. Uh, but this new testimony essentially puts that all to rest. They said there was no other option but to blow these cars up, but that's not the case. Take a look. Your reporting thus far concludes that Norfolk Southern's contractor's recommendation to conduct a controlled burn lacks sufficient scientific basis disregarded available temperature data and contradicted expert feedback from the shipping firm on site. Now, this was all told to the decision makers on the ground that they had to make a decision in less than 13 minutes to blow up all five of these toxic chemical cars without any other voices being included to offer a contrary opinion. Is that right? Now, it's important to note, without Jennifer Homendi uh, and the NTSB, we'd, we would never have heard this. And actually, as her testimony stopped, she, she asked if she could add more context, and it's some of the most important sound. Take a listen. There was another option. Let it cool down. It was cooling down. We know for a fact that when that pressure relief device went off, that it had to have been above 185 degrees. No one was told oxyvinyl uh, uh, was on scene. They were left out of the room. The incident commander didn't even know they existed. Neither did the governor. So they were provided incomplete information to make a decision. Now, I also asked this very question of the fire chief who was in the room. He told me plainly he was never told the tanks were cooling. I asked Norfolk Southern for comment, and I want to read just a part of it. They said the final decision to conduct controlled release was made by the incident commander. That's the fire chief. Uh, from multiple stakeholders, including Norfolk Southern and local, state, and federal federal authorities. Now, uh, Marky, I talked to some residents after this came out yesterday, asked them for their response, and in a word, they said, it's chilling. Yeah. Marky? And we know they've been so angry uh, and worried for so long. It's amazing how much we're still learning more than a year later. This story keeps growing new legs. Uh, Rich McHugh, thanks for staying on top of uh, it for us and bringing Thank us you. the latest. Thanks for watching, everybody. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. Also, don't forget to click that red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.